I mean, with any artist, what does their sexuality have to do with them entertaining you? So, as an actor, you are you are an actor. But I'm a performer. Performer. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not an actor. Okay. I'm I'm an activist. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I'm a performer. So can I perform? Be someone that is a performer. Yes. Or um, I will use another name, entertainer. I'm not even an entertainer because I'm not here to entertain you anymore. Okay. I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't care if you're entertained. <laughs> I'm an awakener and I'm a performer and I want to in, evoke a certain emotion mm -hmm. in you from my performance. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. But I'm not here to entertain you any longer. I did that as a child. I'm a man now. As a man, I have to perform. If you don't perform, you, you don't have a job. Go into your job tomorrow and tell them you don't feel like performing and see what they do to your ass. Right. I'm a performer in any capacity you put me in. You put me in a boxing ring, I'm a perform. You put me in a race, I'm a perform. You put me at a desk, I'm a perform. You put me behind a mic, I'm a perform. You put a guitar in my hand, I'm a perform. Uh, to my point, also, I wanted to mention what I was trying to set up was you chose you choose to be transparent and very open with your life, but some entertainers don't always do that. Um, how do you feel about that? Do you think there's a, one way to approach it, being a performer, that you should try to maybe hold back some stuff that we know about you? Well, um, I feel like for me, my life is an open secret. Okay. And um, some of the things that I've been forthcoming or honest with, um, I, I feel that uh, it's only made me stronger as a performer. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you see someone give a mediocre or a bad performance, um, it's because they didn't expel a lot of the evil. Um, it's because they didn't or they weren't um, transparent as the person that they are. So therefore they weren't able to be um, fearless. Mm. You see somebody holding something back a lot of time just because they have something else on their mind. So, you know, um, I don't ever wanna suffer from uh, uh, what I like to call a, a neuro-optorectomology. And you know that's when your, your your brains get crossed up with your with your eyelids and your asshole, and you have a, a shitty outlook on life. Okay. <laughs> you got to let that stuff out. Right. You know we 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 use the bathroom, don't we? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you held all of that in. <laughs> It'd be a funky situation. So. Kind of, <laughs> so I kind of uh, I mentioned that with performers, you know, uh, choosing to be transparent versus performing and having the audience know nothing about them. There is a conversation that that kind of came up with uh, Carl Winslow. Yes. Uh, we weren't aware or we aren't aware of his sexuality. Did that ever kind of come up uh, while you were a child and acting? And this was a black man who. Some assume is is gay in real life. Did that ever? See, but this is the thing for me. I, I feel like like why is it even a question? I mean, with any artist, what does their sexuality have to do with them entertaining you, them performing for you? Mm -hmm. Unless you trying to give them some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and see, that's that, that that that's that's the issue for me. I mean, um, I do remember. Um, um, there were some things in the tabloids coming up. I do remember. Um, but we have to also understand that the media is created to control narrative. Mm -hmm. And most of the times when you see certain things in the media about an individual, it's because someone wasn't happy, whether it be an agent, whether it be a manager, whether it be an ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Somebody is not happy. And so the only power that they have, or they think they have, is to try and destroy your character. Now, this is what's crazy to me. There are so many things 
that are so much worse than being gay that you could be called. I don't know if it was, okay, so. You, I'm gonna say it again. Go ahead. There are so many things that are so much worse that you could be in life. Even if you are mm -hmm. gay, even if you are um, LGBTQ, whatever, there's so many things. There's, there's a murderer, there's, there's a, a, I mean, there's so many things that are so much worse. Why do we take certain words, just like the word black, mm -hmm. the word black, in some places, at one point in time, we were looked upon as being demons. We were demonized because of the word black. When there's so many other things that you could be called, so many other things that you could be labeled with that are so much worse. What about the, uh, the person who is uh, taking people's children from them, separating family. To my ice. I'm talking about before ice. This ain't nothing new. This, the, the people have been separated from their families for years. We, we, we've seen uh, people, uh, and, it, and history tells this story, mm -hmm. where uh, children were born and snatched from their mother's hands up on birth. <laughs> There's so much more. Right. And so I, I feel like um I feel like it's it's a sad thing. An assassination of character um is are, are tied to things that the media uses mm -hmm. to control our perspective. You know, when we need to be focused on on how to come together, how to how to bring people together. You know, um, I, uh, I, I think back on growing up in the industry and um, I'm grateful for my upbringing because if I, if I wasn't exposed to so much as a child, I know for a fact that I wouldn't be sitting here now talking about these four plus decades that I've been blessed, uh, you know, to, to experience in this industry. Yeah. Because my mind would be this big and less expensive. Right. You know. To kind of I, to kind of clear it up, it wasn't more so of like thinking it was a bad thing, yeah. but I think for the audience, it's just surprising. It shows you Hollywood magic. If he was a gay man portraying a male over a family so just like oh wow like you know that's what i think at least in my perspective of like oh that's interesting that this gentleman might be a uh, homosexual but yet he's holding it down as a black father so that was yeah well no 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 yeah 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 i mean i understand that and and that that that, that would be um and, and it might give a testament of his acting skills well no i'm just saying to, to what i'm saying is that um in, in Hollywood, um, it's really deep because uh, we're looking at an industry that has made billions of dollars, mm -hmm. trillions of dollars, if you really want to break it down, by telling stories. And I think that no one really cares so much about um, the individual portraying the story. In fact, you don't know how many people read or auditioned for that role. Y'all don't even know. Right. We don't know. We don't care. Right? Um, whoever's chosen to portray that role, they got that role because there was something in them that the powers that be believed in. Mm -hmm. And that in itself... That in itself is it, 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 mind blowing to me. You know, I mean, there have been times that I've gone in to read for a role and 
I, I felt like I knew I blew it in the room. Mm. I auditioned for a role, and I was like, that was the worst audition ever. And it was something that somebody saw in me. You know, so we don't know what, what, what people see, you know, in, in, in people. Um, I do know that um, it's truly a blessing uh, to, to be a part of such a wonderful family. Mm. Um, from Bob Boyette to Tom Miller to uh, Dave Duclon, Bill Bickley, Michael Warren, as I've said. Um, and then when it trickles down to the cast, um, you know, Reginald L. Johnson, Joe Marie, um, Telma Hopkins, who's Hollywood royalty. Um, and like I said, we were really a family.